I've met some tough Rhodesians in my time, but none were tougher than Willy de Beer. An ex-regimental sergeant major, he left the army to become a game warden. And I'd heard of him uh, long before I actually met him. His brother told me that Willy was a guy. It took no nonsense. Not from man, nor beast. And so one Saturday afternoon I arrive at the home of uh, Mrs. De Beer, uh, Willie's mother. She welcomes me at the door and the old lady shows me into the lounge. The room is in a deep shadow. Uh, the curtains are closed and in the corner I see a, a figure sitting watching me silently. And she says to me, I'd like you to meet my son Willie. He's uh, recovering from his injuries. I'm sorry we can't open the curtains, but the light hurts his eyes. I say, oh, that's fine. She says, take a seat. I sit down. And the old lady leaves us for a while. And I'm wondering to myself, how am I going to start a conversation with this gentleman? When he points to a table near me, and I look, and I see the skull of a large animal uh, lying on it. And... Uh, the man says, uh, that's a lioness. I said, oh, okay. He said, yeah, she did this to me. Really? Yes, he said. I was uh, at a camp in the Wanky National Park a little while ago. I had my wife with me, my daughter, and my stepson, Colin. And joining us was an old uh, game ranger friend of mine by the name of Len Harvey, who had just got married and he'd brought his wife Jean along. They were going to spend a little bit of time there with us. And uh, in the evening that this happened, uh, we all retired early. There was a, a half-completed uh, hut, a rondavel if you like, near the main house. Um, it had no door in it. Um, there was an opening for a window, but we hadn't put a window in yet. But the Harveys felt that uh, they would be quite happy to make that their quarters while they uh, were, were staying with us. And they'd made themselves comfortable. Well, they retired to this rondavel and uh, we all went to bed. At about 11 o'clock that night, there was a terrific banging on the front door and we could hear uh, screams for help. So we opened up uh, the door and uh, to find Jean standing there, uh, drenched in blood. And she was screaming hysterically that there was a lion in the house, a lion in the house, and that we should help Len. Well, of course, he says, when there's panic like that in the middle of the night and everything is in darkness, nothing seems to go right. I called to Colin, uh, asked him to quickly start up the generator so that at least we could have some light to see by. And uh, then we had a problem because the generator wouldn't start. Eventually we did get that going. He said, but um, part of the uh, rules of our department was that all firearms had to be uh, securely locked up at night. So then there was a, a problem of, of rummaging quickly for the keys and then trying to get the gun cabinet unlocked and then to get uh, two rifles out and have these uh, loaded. And he said, uh, uh, Colin is a town boy. You know, he d doesn't have much experience with firearms, so um, I just quickly uh, thrust one into his hands. Uh, Jean, in the meantime, was explaining to us that as they lay sleeping, a lioness had uh, leapt through uh, the window and had knocked her off the bed. It had then um, grabbed her by the small of the, of the back and she was screaming and um, Len got up and uh, with his bare hands tried to drag this uh, this line off her. Uh, he was punching and screaming at it and uh, eventually it let, uh, let Jean go and then it turned on him. Uh, but he was able to shout to her, run, run, run for it, get out of here. And um, she bolted out through the door. Halfway to the house, she stopped and turned around and went back again uh, to the rondavel uh, to see if she could help her husband. She said there was this terrible moan that came from inside of, of, of the place. And she said when she heard that, she knew that was the last sound she would ever hear from her husband. And then she turned around and ran back and was banging on the door. 
Well, uh, Willie said uh, to his wife Hazel, quickly uh, take Jean across to the main camp, which was uh, situated about 40 kilometers from where they were. And uh, so she bundled uh, Mrs. Harvey into an old VW Beetle that they had, and they set off in the night to uh, try and get help. The two men were left alone now to uh, go and face this lion, and all was quiet. All you could hear was the purring of the generator in the background as they approached the, the dwelling. Uh, Willie said he wasn't sure whether this lion was still inside or whether Len was still alive, so he couldn't risk uh, shooting in through the window. But what he did do was he, he stopped outside and then he called softly, Len! There's no reply. Len! And then he heard an angry snarl from inside and he knew the lioness was still there. So uh, he very, very cautiously uh, approached the, the window and put his head inside so that he could see what was going on. Well, the minute he did that, she went for him. And she grabbed him at the back of the head with one paw, sunk her claws into, into him, and as Woolly tried to move back uh, away from, from the window, she pulled all the skin off the top of his head over his face. And there was blood everywhere. He couldn't see anything. He managed to get off one shot and he doesn't know where it went. Uh, he fell backwards and the lioness was out of the window like a flash, full speed, on top of him. And uh, she grabbed him by the head, picked him up and tried to carry him off in, into the bush. Well, he got his hands in between her jaws to try and protect himself, uh, but this seemed to enrage the animal further. And um, she started gnawing uh, at him, breaking the, the bones in his fingers and in his hands. Colin, in the meantime, was standing there petrified. He, uh, he, he didn't quite know what he was going to do. Here was this animal seemingly about to devour his stepfather in front of him. Um, he tried to get a bead on this uh, uh, lioness, stepped to one side so he could get a better shot. And in the process, he, he stumbled over something, lost his balance, and dropped uh, the rifle. When the lioness became aware that he was there, she let go of Vili, turned on Colin, and charged him full speed, 110 kilo, uh, kilograms of sinew and muscle, and she just flew at him. He had the presence of mind to put his hand out to try and stop this rush, but of course <laughs> it wasn't going to stop anything. But his hand went down her throat and she bowled him over and was on top of him uh, and trying to bite through the arm. He was screaming in terror. Uh, the lioness was clawing at him. Uh, he was lying on his back and Willie then became aware of the fact that this creature had left him and he felt around for something to defend himself with and managed to find the rifle that he had dropped and even though his hands were broken he managed to raise this uh, this firearm and he said to me I, I couldn't see a thing I, I couldn't see anything all I could do was hear I could hear the sounds of Colin screaming, I could hear the snarls and growls of the animal, and I could hear the sounds of the, the struggle. And he said, somehow I, I tried to work out where they were, and I raised, I raised the rifle, and he said, even though my hands were broken, I managed to get off one shot. Bang! And he said, it missed. Bang! A second shot, it went through Colin's wrist. Bang! A third shot into the skull of the lioness. And she dropped there, dead. He said, but it wasn't over. We still had to fight for our lives. He said, we were both in very bad shape, my friend. He said, I could walk. He couldn't walk. The lioness had, had really uh, savaged him badly. And um, he said, but he could see. 
And so uh, with his eyes and my legs, we managed to steer each other to the house and then we, we waited there for help. When his wife Hazel got to the main camp in Wanky and raised the alarm, uh, a senior warden was sent back and he brought with him an African nurse. Uh, her name escapes me at, at the moment and I feel so bad about that because this lady deserves to be remembered uh, for her efforts. Uh, really, uh, Willie said to me, if it wasn't for that good woman, I would have died that night. But this African nurse uh, managed to stop the bleeding when they when they got to the house. She stabilized the two men and uh, uh, cared for them until the sun came up when a Air Force helicopter came and uplifted them, took them to Wanky Hospital. 222 stitches it took to get uh, Willie's scalp back onto his skull. Um, fortunately, he managed to keep his sight um, but it was months and months of treatment uh, before he was uh, able to return to work again. He said, uh, you know, the sad thing about all of this uh, and Len's death is the fact that it could have been prevented. He said, I saw that animal the previous afternoon hanging around the camp and it was behaving completely unnaturally. It was stalking chickens. And I said to Len, there's something wrong with that animal. I'm going to shoot it. And Len said, Willie, don't man, leave it alone. It's, it's, it's not causing any harm to anybody. And he said, I shouldn't have listened to that. He said, later on, they did an autopsy on the line. That's how come I, I got its skull. He said, and uh, there was some disease in the lower jaw. That thing couldn't hunt properly. So he said, it's a great pity that I didn't kill that animal earlier. Oh, well, he was a tough guy, <clears throat> took no nonsense from man or beast. Uh, but I think uh, that night when he <laughs> faced Shumba, uh, luck was on his side.